Hello and welcome to part 3 in our Jigsaw series. In the last part we worked on creating our Jigsaw piece. We're now going to work on making these pieces spawn dynamically and give their images correctly. So we're going to make a new widget for this. And this will be the Jigsaw widget. And this will be where most of the game is taking place. In here we're going to go to the graph. And we're going to go into the construct and pre-construct we can you work in both of these um in fact let's just start with just construct i think for now and what we're going to do is have a variable in here for a number of pieces so number of pieces and that'll be the integer compile that and set its default value to 16 and then what we're going to do is drag that out choose get and now we're going to do a for loop for as many pieces that we need. Now if we do a for loop, for loops start at a value of 0. So we need to take 1 away from this so we still get the correct amount. So this is 16, we want to go from 0 to 15. So take the number of pieces out, minus 1, and plug that into the last index. We're then going to come out of there and create a widget. And the widget we're going to create is our jigsaw piece. Now the jigsaw piece, we need to pass some parameters over to it. If we go to the jigsaw piece, and we need to turn on the editability and exposure of several things here. First of all, we want to change the jigsaw image, so turn that on. And go to its settings and turn on expose on spawn. Same we want to do for piece coordinate. Expose on spawn. And number of pieces here exposed on spawn too. Hit compile and save. If you go back to your jigsaw widget now and then refresh this node by right clicking and choose refresh node, these pieces will now come up. Now the number of pieces is quite easy, it's going to come from here. Drag that across like so. The jigsaw image, we can make another variable here, and this will be the jigsaw image. And that will be again a texture 2D. And this will ensure that all the pieces are working from the same image, texture 2D, and drag that into jigsaw image. So lastly, we need to add our piece coordinate, and that's going to be derived from our index that we're currently in for our for loop. So we're going to move this along a little bit, and on piece coordinate, we can come out and do make vector 2D. So now we can put in different coordinates here for horizontal and vertical. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the index and I'm going to divide by an integer. And I also want to do a modulo, which is percent sign. And that'll give us the modulus. The modulus gives us the uh, remainder of the remainder of the division. So if I put in five divided by four, I'll get the answer of one out of there, and I'll get the one answer of one out of here because that's the remainder of that. So using that. We're going to use our square root of our number of pieces, so drag our number of pieces out. And to square root it, we have to turn it to a float. So to float. And then square root that. We're then going to take that and truncate it, which basically means lop off the decimal point, which you shouldn't do because you should be sticking to these being of decimal of uh, of square numbers and you plug that into both of these so number of pieces if it's 16 will equal 4 truncate by 4 so divide by 4 will give us how many in the column and how many in the rows so you want the modulo one to go to x so plug that into x and you want the division one to go into y so with that done we now need to add this to our widget for our jigsaw widget. So in here I'm going to go to my designer view and we're going to add a second canvas panel to this. Canvas panel and click and drag that onto our canvas panel. So we've got canvas panel within a side canvas panel. This second one we're going to rename and call this the piece tray and you want ticket to be variable. So we're going to want our piece tray here to fill up half the screen, or at least the side over here. Now, a good way of doing this would be to put it into a horizontal box. So right-click on piece tray, go to wrap with, and choose horizontal box. 
The horizontal box, we want to fill up the whole entire canvas. So go to the anchors for the horizontal box and choose fill and change the offsets to all be zero. Then go to piece tray and on here choose fill but then type in the value of 0.4. We're then going to put in another canvas panel inside of that, which would be next to piece tray. This one will also be fill, and we can leave this at 0.6. So now, this one's taking up 0.4 of the space, this one's taking up 0.6 of the space, which is what we want. We're going to leave piece tray there uh, as a variable, because that's what we need to be able to do to add things to it. So let's go to our graph, and you should now see piece tray in the variable list. I'm going to drag that out, choose get, and then do add child to canvas. And we want to drag the content from our return value to that there. Hit compile, and then save. So that's going to add 16 pieces all on top of each other at the moment, but 16 pieces to that child here on the construct. So actually, let's get this showing in the game. So to do that, we're going to go into our level blueprint. I've got just a blank level, nothing in it at all. And on begin play, we're going to go create widget. And we're going to plug that into begin play and choose jigsaw widget. The return value for this, we're going to tell it to add to viewport. Hit compile and save. So now if we push play, we see all our widgets being added to our corner here. Now you see they're squished and all stacked on top of each other. So what we're going to do is make them so they scatter around and at the correct size. So that's because when you add anything to a canvas, it's kind of locked to a basic default size and position. So we need to change that. So to do that, we're going to go into our jigsaw widget, go to the end where we added the child to the canvas. And then from the return value, we're going to set the size. And we'll change set auto size. Tick that. So now, if we play that, you should see them be actually square now, which is good. Next, we want to change their position. So you're going to take the return value here, drag this out, and do set position like so. And the position we want to go for is going to be something random. So I'm going to drag out the in position and do make vector 2D. And we're going to randomize the X and randomize the Y. So let's take our uh, X out and do a random float in range. And our Y random float in range. So the size for our max and uh, minimum for our float in range here is going to be the viewport size multiplied by its scale. Multiply these two together. That way it will spread out across the whole width of it and whole height of it regardless of the size of the window. So I'm going to split this and then drag Y into max for the Y axis but the x-axis, I only want it to fill up 0.4 of the screen because that's what the proportion has been given to the piece tray. So I'm going to take the x out and divide that by... So not divide, multiply by 0.4. And plug that into max. Hit compile and then we'll push play. And if I go into full screen here, and you can see they spread out across that piece tray on the left hand side. Okay. Now there is a possibility that it could overhang the edge of the screen. So what you should do is also add a buffer around the edge of it. Now the buffer we're going to add is going to be on our jigsaw widget. We're going to go to back to the graph and on the minimum we're going to do here is 128. And then we're going to take the maximums and take away 128. Minus float 128. Plug that into max. Copy that, paste that. 
and for Y128. That way it will stop it from overlapping the edge of the screen and going off the edge of the screen. So if I Alt P, there you go. So all we're doing there is cancelling the game and starting up again each time. Currently, if I push play and push it through here, you'll see they all stack up and get kind of pushed to the corner still. Now, I just realised the error I made was that we don't want to multiply by the scale. In fact, we want to divide by the scale. So, replace that with divide. And that should do it. So, split that. Put X up there, Y up there. So, now it should fill the whole side of the screen perfectly. And if I had this at different window, different sizes, so if we go full screen, just restart it, it'll still fill up that whole screen size there perfectly. Okay. And there you go, it's spawning those different image pieces there for us nice and clearly. And it's quite obvious to see using the numbers which uh, how, how it's working out. Um, but let's go into our puzzle widget here. And on here, let's... Uh, add something else to this and make the jigsaw image here different. So I'm going to go down here and change the jigsaw image to our one over here and we're going to put in our puzzle halo. Plug that in. So the last thing we're going to do is just fix a little minor error that I found. If we go into jigsaw piece oh, I forgot to put in the name of the texture sample here so make sure that is spelt exactly the same as our instance here, so it's jigsaw image and go jigsaw image hit compile and save and then if we go to our jigsaw widget we can change the default image here to whatever we want so if I touch choose halo for example hit compile and save hit play and we now get the pieces of the halo picture thrown up everywhere and we can say we can put in any square image into it and it'll work just fine uh, in fact any image if you don't mind it being squished but there you go so in the next episode we're going to build the grid on the right hand side of the screen so you can eventually place these pieces into the grid and check if you've won. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch that next part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can watch all of my videos well before anyone else. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I'll see you all next time. Thanks everyone. Bye.